Do you know how much XP you get for traveling across the map? Ever wondered why your athletic skill increases so slowly? Do you want to learn this one weird trick that doctors hate to gain 186 writing in a single battle? Hello everyone and welcome back to another strat gaming video guide. In today's video we're going to be looking at how XP and leveling work for athletics and writing. By the end of this video you will have a firm grasp of how XP is earned on foot or horseback as well as how to quickly and efficiently level both. And if you stick around to the end of the video I'll show you my top three ways to get a great start in the early game. I've broken this video up into several chapters so if if you're following along you'll be able to easily navigate through relevant segments. Check down in the description below for the timestamps. With all that being said, I hope you enjoy this guide and let's get started. First, let's look at how you gain XP with writing and athletics. There are two ways, moving on the campaign map and doing damage of any kind to an enemy. When you move on the campaign map, you gain XP based on how much distance you travel. The type of XP you gain depends on if you are mounted or on foot. If you're riding a horse, you gain riding XP. If you don't have a horse, you gain athletics XP. Let's Let's look at a few examples. Traveling from the Vlandian town of Ostikin in the northwest down to the Asurai town of Husenfolk in the southeast gave 80 XP for athletics and 61.3 XP for riding. Traveling from Ostikin to the Vlandian town of Sargo gave around 21 XP for athletics and 17 XP for riding. Traveling one full day on the map gave 12 XP for athletics and 8 XP for riding. We can easily conclude two things here. You gain more XP on foot than you do mounted on the campaign map and that XP gain on the campaign map travel is so small it's basically insignificant. The real way to earn writing and athletics is through combat. Much like the previous two guides stated, you gain XP from these skills by doing damage to an enemy. I compiled the data from roughly 200 test runs and condensed everything down into a very brief summary. Doing melee damage on foot you get about 1 to 7 XP for each hit and 30 to 60 XP for each kill. Melee damage on horseback you get about 1 to 5 XP for each hit and 11 to 22 XP for each kill. Range damage on foot you get 3 to 12 XP for each hit and 24 to 66 XP for each kill. Range damage on horseback you get anywhere from 3 up to 1188 XP for each hit and 12 up to 34 44 XP for each kill. For siege weapons and boulders you gain athletics XP. For a boulder kill you get anywhere from 40 to 60 XP. For ballista kills you get 40 to 103 XP. XP and catapult gives about 100 XP per kill. Some interesting side information. There's a weak correlation between damage done and XP gain. There's a strong correlation between distance to your target and the XP you gain. And XP gain is definitely bugged for writing. It looks like they may have misplaced a decimal point somewhere in there. When it comes to leveling writing and athletics, the most efficient methods are the exact same that can be seen in my previous two guides. If you have not already watched those, click the link here or check the description below for that. I don't want to recycle content just to make the video longer. It would not be fair to you and it'd be a waste of your time. So instead we will drop our character down to level 1 for every skill and use a few of the different efficient farming methods so we can see exactly what the level gain looks like. Let's do a quick recap of how to farm looters more efficiently. Grab any horse, any bow, three of any arrow type, find a large looter group, or get several smaller ones to chase you. Start the fight right out to 150 meters, start shooting at them, and retreat when they get into stone throwing range. Repeat this until they are all dead. Here's a cool tip. If you have several small groups following you and they begin to retreat from morale loss, you will have to chase down several small groups and fight many small battles instead of one large one. To avoid this, be sure to press tab and click that retreat button when the final looter group starts to run away. If you do this quick enough, you can reset the battle and continue your farming. This strategy also works for siege defenses where the attacker begins to retreat, but you want to wipe them out completely without having to chase them and fight an open pitch battle. If you hear the end of battle music, then it's already too late, so be sure to hit that retreat button fast. We were able to kill 55 looters for a total of 97 bow levels and 186 riding levels. Don't be surprised if this gets patched soon. The great thing about offensive sieges is that you get to dictate the pace of the battle. Since our goal here is to gain XP for our main character, we can put all of our troops into a single group and have them sit at the back of the map in a shield wall formation. Catapults can't reach them and bows practically do no damage at these distances. We can take our time, stay behind cover, and get as many kills
skills as we like. We take three sets of bodkin arrows and our engineer has the level 75 perk military planner that gives 50% more ranged ammunition in offensive sieges, bringing us to a total of 144 shots. We ended up with 192 kills and lost less than 20 troops. From level 1, we ended up gaining 138 bow levels and 77 athletic levels. Did I also mention we got a free castle out of it? It's free real estate. Using a ballista or catapult during a siege defense is probably the best way to level up your athletics in the game. We covered both of these in the previous guide, so we will skip right to the end to see what a level 1 character would actually get in terms of leveling. For the ballista, we ended up with 77 kills, resulting in 110 bow and 60 athletics levels. For the catapult, we ended up with 198 kills, resulting in 170 throwing and 95 athletics levels. While siege defenses are the best way to level up most skills in Bannerlord, they can be difficult to actually fight in since the AI tends to cancel sieges frequently. I will be releasing a guide that shows you the best ways to get into siege defense battles, so stay tuned. We're nearing the end of the video and as promised, I'll be sharing with you my top three methods for getting a great start in Bannerlord. All three methods will be done solo. Don't take any troops or recruit any prisoners because we want to keep our expenses at zero as well as our movement speed at max. To demonstrate each method, we will ask our friend Chad to help us out. The first method is solo farming looters from horseback. Check the timestamps in this video as well as the range XP guide to see how this is done efficiently. There are four reasons I like to farm looters in the early game from horseback. You can level your bow and riding to near max level within a month or less. You earn decent money and loot. You earn enough renown to get clan tier 1 pretty quickly and it's very safe, very low risk of being captured. The second method is the solo smith. To do this, you will need to have access to towns with lots of hardwood. I prefer the Batanian lands as they they have hardwood in abundance. Our first stop is Dunglanus. Buy all the hardwood you can and begin converting it to charcoal. Do this until you reach level 25 and make sure to take the efficient charcoal perk. When you run out of hardwood, sell all the charcoal you have made and continue to buy the rest of the town's hardwood stock. When the town is depleted, move on to the next town and repeat. Once we reach level 50 or so, we can start buying cheap weapons and smelting them down and craft new weapons to sell back to the town. Within a few weeks, you should easily hit level 100 smithing, have tens of thousands of dinars in the bank, some nice custom weapons to use, and unlocked lots of parts. The best part of all, you didn't risk death or capture doing it. The final method is the solo tournament champion. We start off by going to the nearest town. Wait until daytime, go to the arena, and speak to the tournament master and ask which nearby towns have tournaments running in them. Proceed there and dominate the tournament. You will get minimal XP from these fights as XP gain from tournaments is reduced by 75%, but you will get around 1,000 dinars from betting per win. The value of the prize you won, which is usually between 500 and 1500 dinars, and you get 3 renown per win. With no risk of being captured or a loss of HP, this can be a great way to reach clan tier 1 and set yourself up for a great early game. I want to thank you all for watching another strat gaming video guide. If you liked this video, thrust and stab the like and subscribe buttons down below. The likes really help out the video with a YouTube algorithm. Let me know in the comment section below what kind of guide you would like to see. Next week, we will have the full smithing guide and the continuation of the Robin Hood Let's Play series, so feel free to check those out if you're interested. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.